Romania's story is getting a rewrite. The Eastern Balkan nation is turning the page on the days when Romania's name was associated with the grim legacy of the misery of Ceausescu rule or the crime and corruption of its turbulent post-communist years. Romania is now a poster child for what success can mean upon joining the European Union. It could do much to script a narrative to inspire other aspiring EU candidates like its neighbors Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia. This video will look at how Romania got to where it is today and its challenges as it looks to become the author of its own economic success. Romania was arguably the most depressing place in Europe during the communist years. The country was mired in poverty, created by the economic mismanagement of the Ceausescu regime. The government's foreign debt had soared to about $10 billion by the late 1980s due to spending on ambitious industrialization efforts and enormous construction projects like the Palace of the President, the world's heaviest administrative building. These efforts were fueled by extensive borrowing from international sources like the IMF and Western banks. While nations typically manage debt through refinancing or fostering growth to ease repayment, Ceausescu decided to set Romania the goal of repaying all of the debt at once via enforcing severe austerity and sharply curtailing imports. Ceausescu's myopic focus on debt elimination eventually saw the country repay most of it by 1989, but his prioritization of financial autonomy over the populace's well-being caused extreme hardship for his people. Rising oil crises and rising interest rates significantly impacted imported oil-reliant Romania, which now faced soaring costs for energy and debt repayment. As a result, Ceausescu then embarked on a draconian austerity drive in the early 1980s to eliminate this debt, imposing severe cuts on imports that led to widespread shortages of basic necessities and a steep decline in the quality of life. The average monthly wage in 1985 was about 2,200 Romanian lei, roughly $100 to $150. Housing conditions were cramped, with an average living space of only 12 to 14 square meters per person. The healthcare system was chronically under-resourced, with only about 2.6 hospital beds per 1,000 people in the mid-1980s, and the country faced a high child mortality rate of 25.3 deaths per 1,000 live births in 1989. Energy shortages were prevalent too, and power cuts were regular. The government limited heating, even in harsh winters, restricting it to just a few hours daily. People were starving and forced to subside on a rationing regime of 300 grams of bread per day and 10 eggs, one kilo of chicken meat, half a kilo of pork or beef, half a kilo of cheese, 100 grams of butter, and one kilo of sugar, oil, and flour per month. Even amongst its Balkan neighbors like Yugoslavia, Romania was synonymous with destitution and despair. Eventually, this despair got too much, and in 1989, oppressed, cold and hungry from Ceausescu's botched economic policies, the Romanian people finally toppled their longtime dictator and summarily executed him and his equally hated wife, Elena, live on TV. The 1990s were defined by weak political coalitions in power, economic turbulence, rampant crime and corruption as it transitioned from a state to a market economy. By 2004, though, Romania had cleaned up its act just about enough to be accepted firstly into NATO in 2004, and then into the European Union in 2007, marking the beginning of its economic fairy tale. Investors now felt safer pouring their money into the Romanian economy, with a doubling of foreign investment stimulating a remarkable economic surge in the decade following EU membership. The country's gross domestic product more than doubled from 99.2 billion euros in 2006 to about 284 billion euros in 2023, while GDP per capita rocketed from 4,600 euros in 2006 to around 10,040 euros in 2023. PwC predicts that the economy will further double by 2050. Foreign Direct Investment, or FDI, also played a key role in this growth, with inflows peaking at 9.5 billion euros in 2008, compared to 5.2 billion euros in 2005. While Romania is now a very different country from the squalor of its communist years, foreign direct investment remains a bit of a challenge for the country. Data provided by the National Bank of Romania highlighted a marked drop of 42% in 2023, dropping to 5.06 billion euros from a healthy 8.67 billion euros in FDI in 2022. While Romania recorded 215 inward FDI projects, 
Third in Central and Eastern Europe after regional powerhouses Poland and Turkey, Romania's FDI project count was lower, ranking ninth in the CEE region with only 11.2 projects per million people, as per Global Data's FDI projects database. In comparison, Estonia led the region with 27.1 projects per million people. Despite these improvements, Romania has some way to improve its image and make investors feel safer. EU single market integration has also significantly boosted its exports, which more than tripled from about 30 billion euros in 2006 to approximately 94 billion euros in 2019. The country also saw a notable decrease in unemployment, dropping from 7.3% in 2006 to around 3.9% in 2019. While this does indicate more muscular market conditions within the country, free movement within the EU has allowed many of Romania's unemployed to simply find work in the larger European economies like Germany, France, and the UK. Romania's once crumbling and old communist infrastructure has been revamped by over 45 billion euros in EU structural and cohesion funds between 2007 and 2020. EU funding has helped add a new line, the M1, to Bucharest Metro Map, the Danube Bridge that connects Romania with Bulgaria over the famous river, and building a new airport in Brasov, which opened in 2023. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, the average wages in Romania have seen a substantial increase, from around 350 euros per month in 2007 to about 1,050 euros per month in 2020 significantly enhancing the purchasing power of Romanian citizens. This has allowed a more robust consumer economy to develop. Despite this, Romania still lags significantly behind other European countries, and EU freedom of movement has allowed Romanians to experience better wages abroad, increasing their expectations about what constitutes a good salary. The Romanian car maker Dacia is a striking front cover of Romania's economic novel, the image we all associate with Romania's financial success. Once associated with dictator Nicolae Ceausescu, its cars packed the streets of most of Europe's major cities, boosting sales for its French parent company, Renault, and it's Europe's third best-selling car company. Dacia remains Romania's most valuable brand after the ancient kingdom in pre-Roman Romania. Dacia is the only Romanian brand exceeding the 1 billion euro mark, tipping the scales at 1.06 billion euros in 2023, though it still hasn't recovered to its pre-pandemic value. It was followed by online retailer Emag, valued at 877 million euros, which, although experiencing a 15% year-on-year decline, has boomed following the pandemic. The most interesting thing about Dacia is that it exemplifies a pan-European success story. It's owned predominantly by French auto juggernaut Renault, who acquired a 51% stake in the company during its 1999 privatization and now holds 99.4% ownership. Dacia operates a central production facility in Romania and is one of the country's leading exporters and employers. The future may also be less bright for Dacia as Romania continues to experience declining industrialization, witnessing a 5.1% year-on-year contraction in 2023, along with the wider decline of the European automotive industry. Romania's second biggest company, Emag, was founded in 2001. Emag rapidly grew to a valuation of 1.027 billion euros in 2021, eclipsing Dacia's before experiencing a 15% drop in 2023, which saw Dacia return to the top spot. This innovative company has expanded dramatically under the leadership of Iulian Stancho. Emag proliferated, attracting international investment including a 70% share purchase by the Dutch South African group Prozis Naspers in 2012. The fact that EMAG has done so well reflects the expanding consumer market in Romania and demonstrates how richer Romanians have become in the decades since the collapse of communism. From an average monthly wage of roughly $100 to $150 in the 1980s, Romanians now have the disposable income to buy more, stimulating new sectors of the economy and creating new financial feedback loops. Now, if you find this informative, why not like the video and subscribe to our channel to continue to be part of our journey? We've already talked about Romania's problems attracting FDI, and one reason is Romania's perceived corruption problem. Notorious online influencer Andrew Tate has stated that he moved to Romania because corruption is accessible. But is there any truth to this? Romania has been deeply marred by corruption since the collapse of communism, 
but it has taken great strides in combating corruption. Few countries can claim to have indicted over 1,250 public officials in just one year. Still, in 2015, that's precisely what Romania's National Anti-Corruption Directorate did when it indicted over 1,250 public officials, including a sitting prime minister, for corruption. This crackdown has earned praise from citizens, investors, and international allies, marking Romania's significant progress in addressing its systemic issues. According to Transparency International, Romania is gradually improving its corruption score, while its southern neighbor Bulgaria, which joined the EU at the same time in 2007, has yet to improve its corruption ranking since joining the EU. Bulgaria has failed to establish an effective equivalent to Romania's DNA, preventing it from making the strides its neighbor has. The DNA has its own controversies, however. Some have criticized the body as close to Romania's intelligence service, the SRI. In fact, DNA's future effectiveness in combating corruption may be curtailed by a recent constitutional court ruling that will restrict the use of SRI evidence and attempts by politicians to diminish the powers of the body. Another major problem facing much of Europe since the start of the Russian invasion of Ukraine has been energy. But it's another area where Romania has seen some success. Romania has a strong history of hydrocarbon exploitation, whose legacy lives on through names of local football teams like Petrolul Ploiesti. The Neptune Deep project is Romania's most extensive offshore natural gas development. The development covers approximately 9,900 kilometers squared and is estimated to hold around 100 billion cubic meters of recoverable natural gas. The project started in 2000 when the Romanian government, OMV Petrom and ExxonMobil agreed to develop the Black Sea gas fields. ExxonMobil then pulled out in 2019, but Romania's state gas company, Romgas, acquired ExxonMobil's stake and partnered with OMV Petrom. The field is expected to start production in 2027 after an estimated development cost of $4.37 billion. It's projected to produce 8 billion cubic meters of gas annually for about 10 years. The elephant in the room regarding Romania's economic success is its simultaneous demographic crisis. Low birth rates, high emigration, and an aging population lead to significant labor shortages, which will hamper the country's economic success story. Since 1990, its population has decreased by 17%, dropping by 3.8 million to 19.12 million by 2023, with a further reduction to around 15 million by 2050. Emigration to richer European countries has also accelerated this trend, and the country is experiencing a significant brain drain, with the effects being most acutely felt in the healthcare industry. It's been estimated that by 2015, Romania lost half of its doctors. Romania is a doctor exporting powerhouse, ranking behind only India, Pakistan, and Germany, significantly larger countries regarding doctors overseas. Romania's doctors are well qualified, but their skill sets do not always match Romanian salaries. Currently, Romania is experiencing internal migration, with growth in cities like Bucharest and Cluj, and the government is welcoming foreign workers, with Bangladeshi Uber drivers now becoming a more common sight in the country. The challenge for Romania now lies in adapting to an older population and matching salaries and living standards that many Romanian immigrants have tasted in the West. Romania may struggle to fix its demographic crisis if its wages do not reach the level of that in Western Europe, as its citizens will not return to their home country, where their same skills are rewarded for less. 2024 is a pivotal year in Romanian politics as presidential, parliamentary, local, and Europarliamentary elections are scheduled towards the year's end. The existing ruling coalition, a mix of the center-left Social Democratic Party, the PSD, and the center-right National Liberal Party, the PNL, is anticipated to be re-elected. A key point of interest is the performance of the Radical Right Alliance for the Union of Romanians, the AUR, with President Klaus Johannes approaching the end of his second term, a PSD-backed candidate will likely succeed him as president. The current ruling coalition of Social Democrats, the PSD, and Liberals, the PNL, might not secure a majority due to public dissatisfaction with the government's fiscal management. This dissatisfaction is increasing AUR's increased influence. The party, formed in the autumn of 2019, positioned itself against vaccines during the pandemic 
with the support of the local Orthodox Church and are often blamed as the reason why 50% of the Romanian population didn't get the vaccine. Its platform focuses on family, nation, faith, and freedom, opposes same-sex marriages, and advocates for unification with Moldova, which resonates with voters disillusioned by the long-standing PSD-PNL. The EU, concerned about the rise of far-right parties, will certainly be watching Romania's elections closely. Although Romania remains the EU's second poorest country on a GDP per capita basis, although it rises on a PPP basis, leapfrogging Latvia and Romanian's favorite holiday destination, Greece, the progress it's made from the days of communism must be considered. It's a fact that Romanians live better than ever before, more prosperous, healthier, and with the freedom to travel and live across Europe. Romania's transformation is a story of resilience. As it looks forward, however, Romania must address its demographic challenge if it wants future generations to continue writing chapters of success into this fascinating nation's long and checkered story. Want to become a character in the story of Romania's and many other countries' economic triumphs? Hit like and subscribe and write yourself into economic history.